Hello and welcome to the 8th Future of Education Summit. I am Fifi Peters, really excited to be with you once again. We do have a full program planned for you today, a whole lot of speakers and panelists from all around the globe addressing the most important and the most pressing issues in the education sector. As you know by now, the theme is the pathway to digital transformation. And it speaks to beyond physical transformation. It's looking at the philosophical changes that are necessary to meet the ever-growing demands of students, of the faculty and the campus to create a learning environment where everything connects. Alcatel Lucent describes this as an ecosystem that does combine technology services and security to bridge the digital gap to create collaborative, interactive and personalized learning experiences. Before we do get into the talks and the panel discussions and the interviews that we do have planned for you today, let's have a look at this background piece. Digital transformation is important in building competitive advantage in the higher education sector. This advantage is relative and needs to evolve constantly to stay ahead. Digital transformation involves intense adjustment in response to changes in the socio-economic education system. The internet has revolutionized the ways in which knowledge is developed and communicated and educational institutions are no longer sole custodians. Today, anyone, anywhere in the world can develop or distribute knowledge and can provide teaching and learning at no cost in ways that free learners from physical locations or set timings. The adoption of emerging technologies in higher education influences pedagogy, processes and support systems and structures. Moreover, the globalized economy has led to changes in educational standards, information exchange, quality, decentralization and evolutionary learning. Against this backdrop, institutions are challenged to create new services and redesign existing services to remain relevant in an inclusive education sector. Beyond mere physical transformation, philosophical change is necessary to meet the ever-growing demands of students, faculty and campus to create a learning environment where everything connects. With that said, the uh, scene is set for today's events, and I would like to welcome to this uh, virtual summit Mr. Rakesh Wahi. He is the founder of the Future of Education Summit as well as the co-founder of the ABN Group. Mrs. Roberta Naika, the managing director of the ABN Group. We have got academics and sector leaders from all over the world. That is Africa, the UK, Australia and the Middle East. And of course, welcome to our viewers on CNBC Africa, as well as those who are tuning in on Hopin. Thanks so much for giving us your time today and uh, for being with us for these all important uh, discussions. You can join in and partake on the socials using Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, or even Instagram. The hashtag is FOE2022. Join me now as we do welcome the man who has made this summit possible. Welcome address by Rakesh Wahi, co-founder of the ABN Group and founder of the Future of Education Summit. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a privilege for me to welcome you to the Future of Education Summit 2022. Like last year, this year's event is a virtual one. I sincerely hope that by next year, we'll be able to revert to an in-person seminar and welcome you all to Johannesburg, which has been home to this event since its inception eight years ago. The purpose of this event is to bring thought leaders from around the world to share their experiences, particularly in the higher education space, as it is this phase that determines the trajectory of a student's future. While basic education provides the strong foundation needed, tertiary education in all its forms prepares students for the real world where they can take their knowledge and skills to earn a living and proceed to make a meaningful impact to the communities in which they reside. Last year, 
we had discussed the evolution of purpose behind education and the changes needed to contextualize purpose with the current needs of society. The purpose of education has evolved over the last hundred years from preparing contributing members of society, critical thinkers, teaching morality, enabling creativity and productivity, thereby leading to a learning society. In our current context, and in addition to these values, we have all agreed that we have a higher education system that has an inclusive and innovative approach to teaching and learning, homogeneous international collaboration in research and innovation, and the ability to ensure a sustainable future. This year's theme is on digital transformation. At the core of it, we need to define what digital transformation means to our organizations and how it can provide better learning experiences and outcomes for our students. I'd like to use the quote from Lucent Alcatel that best describes the journey ahead. Digital transformation is a physical and philosophical change designed to meet the ever-growing demands of your students, faculty and campus to create a learning environment where everything connects. This is an ecosystem that combines technology, services and security to bridge the digital gap to create collaborative, interactive and personalized learning experiences. There is no one size that fits all. Organizations are in different geographies and at different stages of maturity in the education journey. Our panels today consist of senior executives and experts from all over the world, which include the United Kingdom, Australia, the Middle East and Africa. Hearing their views on what this journey means to their organizations will be extremely beneficial. As an example, the Inter International Finance Corporation has been doing groundbreaking work on the state of readiness of educational institutions, particularly in emerging markets regarding digital transformation. An area that I found most beneficial was their module on the assessment of employability of graduates. This is a key area of assessment as the proof of the higher education pudding lies in employability and this tool helps organizations assess the improvements needed to ensure that their students find gainful employment. This brings me to the all-important issue of increasing global unemployment, especially in Africa. The African Development Bank had stated that most of the youth in Africa do not have stable economic opportunities. The bank reported that of the 420 million African youth aged 15 to 35, only one in six, or about 17%, is in secure wage employment. While 10 to 12 million youth enter the workforce each year, only 3.1 million jobs are created, leaving vast numbers of African youth unemployed. This is a serious issue facing us in the continent as youth unemployment will lead to other societal degeneration. Africa is projected to have a population of about 2 billion by 2015. While there is a lot of opportunity, there is also a, a major challenge in providing education to what will be the youngest population in the world. Our estimation is that even if we were to set up 500 tertiary education institutions across Africa, we will still not have adequate capacity to provide education for everyone through traditional face-to-face -face teaching and learning. While blended learning is an immediate solution, there are a number of factors that need to be addressed expeditiously. These include broadband infrastructure at affordable costs, curriculum design, teaching capacity, and seamless accreditation. The other side of the coin is the impact of technology and innovation on businesses in general. Because of technological changes, it's not uncommon to hear that many jobs of the future do not exist today. As a result of this, most governments across Sub-Sahara Africa are prioritizing STEMs, technical and vocational education. This is based on national goals, sectors in which investments are likely to take place, and a skills audit to better understand the gaps between available skills and opportunities. 
all jobs in the future will require some form of computer literacy. As a progressive example, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Johannesburg shared with me last month that all courses at UJ now have a unit of artificial intelligence embedded in the curriculum. This is true transformation. Another urgent issue to be resolved is the disconnect of business from academic institutions. I'm not talking about the top global conglomerates, research grants, donations, or campus recruitment from select organizations, but engagement of the broader business community, particularly SMEs, in the university ecosystem. It is important to increase the quantum of practical education from industry experts and CEOs into every program. This exercise can be easily undertaken through a technical interface and will, have, and will give critical insight into curriculum redesign and student employability. I have painted a high-level picture with some current realities facing us in Africa. The needs of the continent are very specific. Close collaboration with international and highly ranked universities is an essential part of this journey to achieve excellence in quality standards. Better understanding of our needs, customization and curation of curriculum with greater emphasis on practical learning, a cost-effective communications infrastructure, building capacity of qualified teachers, including those from industry, a seamless regulatory environment, corporate certification of programs, increased financial aid for the student body, and above all, participation from, from the private sector to build capacity are some areas that need immediate consideration. There are a multitude of additional matters that will be addressed in the discussions with our esteemed panelists today. We are speakers from around the globe, and this platform is all about thought leadership and collaborations. We must work together, leveraging our individual and organizational strengths for a better future. Finally, I'd like to thank the British Council, Hewlett Packard, UCT Online School, the Transnational Academic Group, Curtin University Dubai, Lancaster University Ghana, CNBC Africa and Forbes Africa for supporting this forum. We could not have done it without you. With these words, I welcome you all to what I believe will be an excellent and interactive forum. Your participation is truly appreciated. Thank you very much.